Hi everyone, I'm Alan Joaquim with the Sons of History. Okay, we are at the site of the Battle of Cowpens, one of the greatest American victories in American warfare and especially in the Revolutionary War, took place right here. Now, Nathaniel Green took over command of the Southern Department after Horatio Gates was humiliated at Camden. Now, on paper, it's said that he had about 2,300 soldiers, but in reality, he really only had about 1,500 that were capable of fighting. So what he did was he split his command. He gave 600 to Daniel Morgan and kept the rest for himself. Now, Charles Cornwallis, when he knew that Daniel Morgan went off on his own, he sent Bannister Tarleton after Morgan, and he himself, Cornwallis, went after Nathaniel Green. Now, Tarleton was chasing Morgan. Now, Morgan was retreating, but he was, uh, before he could get to the Broad River, which is in that direction, he found out that it was kind of flooded and he really couldn't, he didn't want to get caught trying to cross it while Tarleton showed up. So he decided, you know what, this would be a good time to turn around, stand up, and fight Tarleton once and for all. Uh, he figured that with the flood in the back, there's nowhere for anyone to run, so there would be no retreat. It's, it's victory or death. So now in the process, he was able to acquire 500 additional militiamen to join his unit. So now he had 1,100 men overall, same number as Tarleton. Now, on January 17th of 1781, Tarleton caught up with Daniel Morgan, whose camp was right over there. They got here around 7 a.m. and they got into formation to fight. Now, I, I will show you, I'll, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and just show you where they are. That way you can get a better idea. Okay, so, now where we're standing is where some of the American soldiers were. All right, so, the British were down there. Now, this happened at 7 a.m. Now, this is, right now, it's about 7 p.m. Uh, sunset. So, therefore, at 7 a.m., the sun would have been in the eyes of the Americans. So, now, here's what Daniel Morgan did. He put a few, he put three lines of men. Now, the first line was about, now, if, I don't know if you can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zip up, and you should see a sign. Now, where that sign is, that's where the first line of skirmishers were. So Daniel Morgan put skirmishers there, mostly sharpshooters. So when the British foot soldiers charged first, those sharpshooters just took out as many of the officers as they could. After they uh, wrecked their havoc, they ran back over here. And, sorry, I keep, keep kicking the tripod. And I'm going to kind of zoom out so you can get a better, there we go. All right, so now right around here in this general area was the second line of men. Now that second line of men were militia. And what Daniel Morgan told them was to fire three volleys and then run. And what he said was that they were to run not directly behind, but more to the right in that general, in that general direction. Anyway, so, so the skirmishers caught up with the militiamen. The militiamen fired their rounds, and then they ran. Now, when the dragoons, now the dragoons are, those are the guys that fight, they're like the cavalry. They're on horseback. When the dragoons saw the militiamen running, they charged as hard as they could down this area. But lo and behold, William Washington, an American who also led uh, dragoons, attacked the British Dragoons. And so now the British Dragoons were routed by William Washington and the American Dragoons. Now, we're gonna go back over here. So the militiamen ran, as we told you before, and the British foot soldiers, they kept coming in this direction. And then they came across a third line right over that hill. It was a third line of Continental soldiers. And it was also mixed with militiamen. So, here's the uh, British moving, 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 and then thinking that they're routing the uh, militiamen, thinking they're routing the Americans, and lo and behold, over the hill is a line of Continental soldiers and militia, and they fire on the British, and the British are just getting pummeled left and right. Now, way on the other side, 
there were some uh, there were some British that broke the uh, American right and some of them misunderstood their orders and they kept marching back rather than taking on the uh, the British they kept marching back and kind of like a retreat so the British kept coming and when they went over another hill the militia that looked like they were retreating actually turned around under Daniel Morgan's order and about faced and fired and just fired volley after volley into the uh, into the British so now here is where the thing the story gets really interesting a double a double envelopment during all this fighting the cavalry or I'm ra rather should say the dragoons managed to encircle the British who were led to fight right around that hill so you had what was called a, dub a double envelopment. Now this was something that Hannibal did against the Romans. And Hannibal was able to annihilate the uh, Roman army. This was around the 3rd century BC. But for right now, that is what Daniel Morgan did. He did his own version. Uh, I believe the battle was called Cannae. So he did his own Cannae. In fact, I think they call this the American Cannae. Double envelopment of Tarleton and his men. Tarleton tried to get his men to charge. They refused. He did get some men to charge. They attacked, but it was still, it was just a disaster. So many British guys. There were about 300 killed and wounded British soldiers here on this field. And well over 500 taken prisoner. Tarleton's force. Now, Tarleton... He was a feared man. Everybody, wherever he went, Americans, the, the, uh, the Southerners, South Carolina, North Carolina, they would run and they would hide because Tarleton was, was feared. He was known as Bloody Tarleton, and he was not known to be merciful to prisoners. But in this case, Tarleton got his ass kicked. Now, unfortunately, he did manage to get away. And uh, he did eventually meet up with... Uh, Charles Cornwallis, but this is where his reputation was pretty much destroyed, right in this field, the Battle of Cowpens. Now, fortunately, uh, Tarleton was eventually captured during the Battle of Yorktown, but in the meantime, what had happened was that Cornwallis, when he heard about the total demise of Tarleton's Dragoon Legion, Cornwallis was pissed off, and he was determined to get back. This, this was now a vendetta. He said he would, he would go, I believe he said something about going to the ends of the earth, but he was going to get Green and uh, Morgan. And that is what led to the race for the Dan, or the race for the Dan River. So Cornwallis wanted to get his prisoners back, and more than that, he really, really wanted to, to uh, avenge what happened here. He wanted to avenge uh, the dragoons. He wanted to avenge the soldiers that were killed here. He wanted to avenge the Battle of Calpens. Well, he did not get his chance. Uh, at the race for the Dan, Nathaniel Green managed to get there first. Now, we do have a video of uh, what happened at the Dan River, uh, or as we called it, the Dan River, the race for the Dan. Uh, that'll be another video. Um, and we actually will show you the exact location of where uh, one of the ferries, because there were a couple of ferries that uh, Nathaniel Green took uh, to get his men across. But, but this is uh, th this right here. This is where the battle took place. The Battle of Calpens, where, where uh, Daniel Morgan just totally annihilated uh, Bannister Tarleton and his force. And the race for the Dan began because of this battle. Anyway, we're here in South Carolina. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. Um, if you happen to be in this neck of the woods, come out and honor the men who fought here at the Battle of Cowpens, one of the greatest American victories in South Carolina. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. My name is Alan Joaquin, and I am with the Sons of History. Thank you very much.